And welcome once again to the Talking Archive. I'm Josh Jacobs, and our conversation continues with Willie B. Now, last time we are talking about his time at YCR. And by the way, where is YCR? Uh, that's in York, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're actually in Hanover, about 25, 30 miles away. So uh, it was a, that was a tough job, man. It was a real challenge, though. And um, uh, God love uh, my GM, Rick McCausland. He let me do what I wanted to do. Uh, even though I'll never forget, uh, you know, he was a good old boy from that part of the country. And one night I got a call at home waking me up, uh, battle of the bands. I'm <laughs> like, Willie, uh, you you got to meet me in my office tomorrow morning at 9.30. Uh, this is in L.A. or Baltimore, man. I grew up here. And I just heard a song on the radio tonight, da-da-da-da-da. And uh, we, we just can't play stuff like that. And it's like, well, good, Rick. You want to program the station? Have at it. At any rate, the song in question was Joy and Pain by Rob Bass, which here 30 years later you're still hearing on car commercials and things <laughs> like that. So uh, even even if they disagreed uh, with what I was doing, they still let me uh, try to uh, get away with it. So, uh, yeah, we had a good run there, and uh, we had a really good sounding station, and uh, the numbers uh, bear that out. And that was after um, uh, B-104? After, yeah, exactly, uh, after Baltimore. All right, and then you were also... Uh, on Quad 106 in Sacramento. Um, yeah, I was program director there for about a year. Longest year of my life, but uh, <laughs> we're not going to mention any names, like the guy who owned it back then. But, uh, yeah, uh, uh, without getting into detail, uh, the owner has a bit of a reputation, and so much to the point that uh, uh, when I had taken that job, uh, Joel Denver called me at home one night, like Willie. Man, you know, you want to program in a major market, fine, but but this isn't the one, man. There'll there'll be something else. Just just wait it out. But you don't want to go work for this guy. And you know, it's like, oh, I worked for assholes before. I can uh, no, no, that was uh, <laughs> that was a tough one there. But at least it got me back to California. You know, <laughs> there we go. And then uh, after Quad One Hundred Six, where did you go? Uh, I was down in San Antonio for a little while. Bill Foreman had offered me a job at uh, KTSA back in the day, or I'm sorry, uh, KTFM uh, back in the day. So, And I didn't take that job, but uh, Bill Foreman and I had been in touch ever since. And Sacramento wasn't working out, and it's like, well, why don't you come down and do afternoons in San Antonio? And, you know, it was a great market, man. They had flown me out and wind and dined me in Riverwalk and all that. So uh, I was in San Antonio just a short time. And I got there maybe within five months. They wanted to change formats and go AOR. And, you know, they didn't blow me out or anything. But, you know, that, that sort of wasn't my deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, at that very moment, as fate had it, uh, KHFI, uh, 70 miles up the road in Austin, had an afternoon tribe opening. And uh, I uh, landed that. And that turned into a really good run there. Yeah, in fact, uh, Austin, Texas, Austin City Limits, all this great music. Uh, how often did you attend local concerts when you lived in Austin? You know, uh, not too often at all, man. I I'm not one for concerts. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, uh, you know, when you play the music all the time, and again, I can respect the artist and I can appreciate uh, the value of concerts and all, but, you know, when you, like I said, I had to MC all of those in Baltimore, and, you know, when you've gone to so many, man, uh, you know, unless it's the Beatles at Shea Stadium, uh, you know, let's don't say we did. So <laughs> I, I'm really no fun, man. Honest to goodness, uh, with the radio life, and I'm talking about appearances and, you know, being in front of all these people and, uh, you know, hey, look at me, look at me. If it was up to me, I would be with uh, Henry David Thoreau in a shack at Walden Pond, you know. Uh, that's I, I'm really more of an introvert, and you never guess it from the way I'm babbling on with this phone call. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's one of the great things about radio, Josh, is that you can be famous without anybody knowing who you are. Oh, yeah, exactly. And it's interesting you mentioned that because Don Steele was a lot like that. Um, you know, he was larger than life on the radio, but in, in real life, uh, yeah. he was kind of, kind of introverted, kind of shy. Um, yeah, so like, reminded, uh, big, big Ron O'Brien and I were like that. Uh, I think that's why we hit it off. Um, you know, uh, uh, people that you can talk to about radio and, uh, can you believe what those guys over there across the street are doing, but also just talk to about the meaning of life, man, and, uh, what are we doing on this earth? That kind of a thing. So, you know, like I said, that's, uh, some of the uh, long lasting friendships that last to this day. Well, Austin's a very beautiful city. I love their barbecue, by the way. That was really good. And, uh, of course, every time I go to Texas, I have to have a water burr. Um, yeah. <laughs> in fact, when I was in Phoenix last, about three months ago for spring training, uh, had a water burger, a Culver's burr, and then went to Mel's Diner. Diner was Mel's Diner where Alice took place. <laughs> awesome, man. One-stop shopping. Good it was, you. yeah. 
<laughs> and then they even had Illuminaldi's, which is a Chicago uh, pizza chain there. So I had myself a deep dish pizza for one. So, uh, man, I couldn't believe how many restaurant variety there was in Phoenix that wasn't even in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, from uh, from KRIC, talking up Love Child, to Boogie Check and John Landecker, man. Yeah, We're John Records Landecker. <laughs> in fact, I interviewed Jeff Davis a couple of months ago, and he's good friends with uh, with John Landecker. And, uh, of course, they were on WLS together as well. So, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, Jeff's doing a documentary right now, like the first hundred years of, of WLS radio. Uh, he wow. did the uh, 75th anniversary special. Now he's working on the 100th, which is going to be uh, coming out next year. Um, Mind boggling. Now, you also went to New Orleans. How was that market for you? Uh, you know, and again, uh, Bill Foreman, who I mentioned earlier, um, Bill Foreman, I uh, had been out somewhere, I forget, uh, my dad uh, had taken a turn for the worse and was in bad health, and so I had kind of put radio on hold for a couple of months to get him situated. Uh, you know, we got in my house and all that. So in the middle of all that, uh, I come home from, uh, I think, seeing my dad at the hospital or something, and uh, on my caller ID, I see like four, five, six calls from Bill Foreman. I'm like, well, it must be important. So called him back, and he's like, uh, uh, and he was down in uh, Homa, which is about 60 miles south of New Orleans. But uh, he was programming Mix 104 with this incredible signal that uh, had a city grade signal in both Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Mm. So uh, and Bill Foreman again, I had worked uh, with him in San Antonio. So he goes, hey man, uh, how would you like to uh, go back to San Antonio? It's like, well, sure, what you got? He goes, okay, I, can, I, I have a station here. Uh, we're going to sign on in 30 days. I want to put you an afternoon drive. But in the meantime, could you do me a favor? Anyway, you could come down to New Orleans. We'll put you up at a hotel, and I need somebody to fill in nights here for, like, in the next month. And it's Homa and all that, but, again, it's a New Orleans station. And it's like, yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, again, growing up in uh, Montgomery, uh, you know, we had gone on vacation to New Orleans and people going down there on spring break and whatnot. So, you know, I was uh, hip to Bourbon Street and, uh, you know, the Causeway and all the attractions in New Orleans. And like, oh, that'd be kind of a cool place to hang out for a month. Sure. Well, 30 days turned into seven years, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mix 104 didn't last, but uh, I had an offer to go to WLTS, and, uh, you know, they were the hot AC station there, and uh, did afternoons, uh, nights and then afternoons for quite some time. And, uh, yeah, I had a really good run, man. It's uh, pretty amazing, uh, you know, to get off the air. In New Orleans, uh, you, you know, like I said, at first I did nights. Uh, you get off at midnight when generally most markets are sleeping. And uh, when they move the uh, studios downtown, you know, you get off at midnight and uh, a few blocks away, here's Bourbon Street. And it's the biggest party on the planet going on, you know. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of weird to be in a market like that that was, uh, you know, so very active. But I'll tell you what, man, it's the most corrupt city I've ever seen in my life. Oh, wow. One of my best friends yeah. lives there, and uh, she kind of wants to get out of it. She wants to move back to Los Angeles. She's originally from New Orleans, lived in L.A. for about four or five years, and then moved back there about 17 years ago. And uh, so, But she is looking to move elsewhere, so I'm not too sure where she's going to move. But uh, uh, I was going to visit a couple of years ago, but then I got sick, and then my dad, who usually is like, Josh, you got to go out and see the world. Uh, yeah. He says, actually, it's a good thing you didn't because it was around the time COVID hit. And mm -hmm. I might have had COVID, you, you know, that's why I was not able to go because I was feeling really tired, really just achy and just couldn't even yeah. barely walk. I was like, I wonder if I had COVID back then. It's kind of like a thing in myself. So I've never been to New Orleans, even though that was three years ago. Uh, we visit each other, you know, in different places, but not New Orleans itself. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, uh, and I'm sorry you had COVID. I hope, uh, that was it and you built up the immunity, my friend. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a great city to visit. Uh, again, the attractions here and, uh, the history, uh, the above, ground gray uh, graves, things like that, that you don't see anyplace else. Uh, you go down to the bayou, and uh, people speaking that Acadian French, they really do, you know. Uh, you'll turn on the radio in some quarters down there, especially uh, down to the uh, parishes uh, on the bayou, and you'll hear uh, like what sounds like a regular country song, and then the vocal comes on, and the guy's going, Will it be français? You know, <laughs> and so you hear that, uh, that Cajun French being spoken down there to this very day. So that, that was really a, a culture shock, uh, in a way. But, uh, yeah, corrupt city, man. Uh, I remember getting stopped, uh, the uh, police there, uh, that uh, patrol, uh, like one of the big bridges. I got stopped for whatever, and the guy wrote me a ticket. 
Well, I go on the air that night talking about uh, the Crescent City Connection cops, and they're known to be corrupt or whatever, and I uh, got a ticket. Man, can you believe this? And how much do you think I'm going to have to pay? I think I opened up the phones. <laughs> well, I get a call. One of the uh, ladies says, uh, so, you got a ticket from Crescent City Cop, did you? I'm like, yeah. She said, did you get his badge number and name? I said, yeah, it was so-and-so. And the woman goes, yeah, he's a real jerk. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. So, this is New Orleans for you. The woman, uh, there's a pause, and she says, listen, you're giving away Tina Turner tickets on the air, right? I go, yeah. She says, all right, so you want to get rid of your ticket, and I want Tina Turner tickets. Let's make a deal. So it turned out this was the lady that did data entry for the police. So she looked at my ticket, and in exchange for Tina Turner, it was gone. <laughs> Just like that. Corruption at its finest, you know? And i got to tell you, man, I'm not, I'm not one for corruption, but yeah. uh, if you're going to be corrupt, that was the way to do it, you know? But I'll just never forget. It's like, uh, and I remember as the woman was saying this, it's like she really has no idea who I am or who could be in the room listening or anything like that. But here she is, plain as day. Yeah, I can make that go away uh, if you want to send me some Tina Turner tickets. Uh, so at any rate, uh, there you have it. If only life could work that well all the way around, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, who are some uh, DJs you got to work with in New Orleans at uh, WLTS? Uh, let me see. Uh, Steve Souter, uh, he was the uh, program director at the time. I think he's still down there. I think uh, even with all the uh, intercom audacity cuts, he's uh, still hanging on at uh, Magic, uh, their uh, heritage AC in the market. And uh, there was uh, a couple of guys, Blair Coleman. I don't think any of these guys are doing it anymore. Um, and that's, uh, you know, a lot of people came and go. Uh, there was... Uh, um, uh, Kelly Diamond, she ended up at KFRC. Uh, Kim Diamond, uh, she has since died. And uh, another great uh, female talk, uh, Sherry the Oldie Sweetheart, uh, on the Cool 95 side that we did fill in for. And she has since died. But uh, uh, um, Robert, uh, Roger, Robert Allen, uh, the morning guy there, he just died recently, too. Yeah, the moral of the story, don't work with me, you're going to drop dead sooner or later. But, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jim Hanzo, my program director, a lot of nice guys down there, man. A lot, a lot of, I, I, I like these guys that were from New Orleans, man. They, they didn't take themselves too seriously, you know? And uh, then you went to Indianapolis to um, 107.9 The Track, uh, which later became my 107.9. We Play Everything. It was kind of like a Jack FM style format. How similar was it to Jack and what differed from the Jack format? Uh, good question. Uh, it was and it wasn't. Uh, Tom Watson uh, hired me there. Uh, he had been our consultant in New Orleans, coincidentally enough, so uh, he brought me in uh, to do afternoon drive, and I later ended up being program director when they got rid of uh, Tom. Uh, so uh, at first it wasn't the We Play Everything. Uh, it uh, really turned out to be, at uh, at beginning, uh, kind of a uh, uh, gold-based AC format. Uh, you know, they played a, a lot of the current uh, AC music, but also, uh, and I remember hearing it when Tom first uh, called me, hearing it on the stream, and I'm hearing California Girls by the Beach Boys, and Take Me Home Tonight by Eddie Money, mm-hmm. and then maybe a current song by whoever, you know, but again, uh, it was like, uh, you know, it sounded great to my ears. You know, like, this is what's missing, I thought, from an AC format. Uh, you know, you can only hear so much Shania Twain or Michael Bublé or whatever, <laughs> but when you mix it in and you hear California Girls or something, and you know the station has the capacity to go back that deep and, and play songs that, you know, really matter, that have that emotional attachment. And uh, we had a pretty good run there. I think um, uh, there was a while there uh, in Indianapolis. I, I think we topped out at about a 6.2 at one time. Mm. You know, uh, had some uh, pretty good numbers, and better in fact, uh, we got in trouble because we outperform uh, Z99, ZPL, you know, their uh, heritage uh, CHR. Mm. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's when the powers of B came in and uh, kind of uh, went through our music library and uh, took out a lot of the titles that had helped us uh, beat our sister station. So, you know, it was a mixed bag. <laughs> oh, uh, and then uh, after that, you went to Classic Hits 94.1 WKQK in Memphis. 
Yeah, um, I'm, not glad one of us, I'm glad one of us is keeping track, Josh. I lose like, where the hell was I? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm the last person to ask. Uh, yeah, that was uh, also at Intercom Station. Uh, Bill Pasha uh, uh, was our consultant, and he had been a really good guy to me. Uh, he had offered me a WAPE in Jacksonville many years before, and we had uh, kept in uh, touch somewhat. So he was consulting uh, both uh, the uh, Intercom Station and uh, – uh, Indianapolis and the new uh, Classic Ed station that we're signing on in Memphis. So even as program director and on-air PD in Indianapolis, I still had the voice track uh, WOLX in Madison and KQK in Memphis. So, boy, you talk about a long day, man. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the situation in Indianapolis uh, wasn't too good. I, I wasn't happy there and, um, you, you know, needed to make a change. So I was able to kind of go uh, behind the scenes and uh, get with uh, Bill Pasha and uh, the GM there, Dan Barron. And it's like, listen, instead of me being voice tracked, why don't you just bring me down there and let me voice track Indianapolis instead? <laughs> so somehow they were able to work that out. Uh, so that's uh, so it's kind of weird, man. Uh, you know, when you are new to a market, you're new to a market. You sit down the first time and kind of get acquainted with the audience and all that newness. You know, like like you feel a, a compulsion to introduce yourself. Uh, you know, uh, the first few weeks. Uh, well, here was the market I'm arriving in, seeing for the first time, and I'm hearing myself already on the air. You know, I had been voice tracked, like I said, for uh, the better part of a year. So my first day live, it's like just picking up where I left off on Friday, except, you know, whole new equipment and everything else. But uh, uh, that was a blast, man. Uh, I enjoyed Memphis. It uh, became one of my favorite markets. And especially after Indianapolis, uh, Indian No Place, where, you know, beyond the Colts <laughs> and the Indy 500, there's just nothing else going on. God love it. But, you know, you drive down to Memphis after several years in Indianapolis, and the first thing you see is Elvis Presley Boulevard, next exit. Like, well, this is going to be cool. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, good run there, man. Uh, friendly people, uh, Mellow Market, uh, Bill Street, a lot of fun, uh, Civil War fanatics, Shiloh's nearby, uh, you know, uh, Mississippi River, all that stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Memphis. Had a good run there. And it's also the barbecue pork capital of the world. Well, you know it, man. And uh, you get there, and uh, I've had good barbecue before, but never quite like Memphis. I mean, it was that good, above and beyond. This is the Talking Archive. My name is Josh Jacobs. We're talking with Willie B. And next time, we'll find out his favorite place in Memphis, how he made it back to the West Coast, as well as what station and market he was in when he was named Billboard Radio Personality of the Year.